G'day world and welcome back to Stuff We Do, where we do all the knife stuff you love. Knife reviews, knife tests, knife modifications and outdoor stuff with knives. Okay, it's Friday afternoon. Brad, this one is for you. Okay, today I am going to talk about locks on knives. Now, yeah, let's start at the beginning. Okay, everything is quite far away from me, so you'll have to give me a second between different lock styles to reach over, fall off my chair and grab the different knives I have, because I have quite a few outside, and I want to share it with you, and then we will go to my favorite locks right at the end. Okay, I like knife locks. Okay, um, first ones, slip joints. When we think about something like a traditional slip joint, we think about something like this. Something with a back spring. Okay, so the back spring provides the tension that keeps the knife open. This will also be referred to as the walk and talk of a knife. Okay, some have half stops, this one does not, some do not. And then that is your walk and talk i suppose the talk is a snapping and the walk is the move from one side to the other okay um this knife um i've showed you previously i think it was with the case and with a few others but this is a uh bronco series cattleman's cutlery knife okay this is the stockman configuration but this is a backspring knife now anything where this uh, this knife uh, john deere Made in Solingen, Germany, Inox Solingen knife. Okay, this one has got the backstop. You see, the torque on this one is better. It snaps harder. This is an electrician's knife, but it's made in the sodbuster looking configuration. Anyway, so anything like this, where you have a back spring that provides the tension with the blade to keep the blade open, but it's not something that's locked, we will call a lockback knife. Okay, so number one, lockback knives. Then we get the modern equivalent of this, which we will call a double detent knife, something like this, which has a detent ball at the bottom and at the top. Now, you hear that little snap? So there's no tension, no tension, snap. Okay, that is a double detent knife which makes the action in between quicker and easier but it still locks it in place at the close and at the open position okay this is the Civivi Appalachian Drifter okay double detent knives which is like a modern take on the slip joint pretty much but it does not actually have a piece of metal holding tension onto the blade Okay, it's just a little ball that flops into a hole, and that gives us that. Um, sorry, if you see ants running on me, or on the camera, or, well, phone, or on whatever, it's that time of year again where the ants try to eat me alive in my garage. Okay, then we are going to talk about lockbacks. Okay, like I said previously in the lockback video, we cannot talk about lockbacks without talking about the Buck 110. And then I decided to take out a more modern Buck. This is the Buck Spitfire. These are 420 with the Boss Heat Treat knives. Okay, the little Spitfire is a fantastic little knife. Aluminum handles, anodized. Um, they do rub off in time, but... In time, I mean like 15 years, maybe. I don't know. It's a long. Okay, both of these are USA made knives. And then you have a lock back. Where you press the lock, it lifts the little the cutout on the back spring from the blade. And then it will open. Okay, so that is lock back blades. Now, this is still one of the strongest lock types you can get. And it's also one of the most common lock types you can get. Okay. Then we get all kinds of variants on that. Okay, first up, things like the cold steel kudu. 
Okay, it's got like a half stop and it locks and it's pretty much, well, it's not a lock back. This is more like a slip joint, but with the spring on the outside. Okay, then we get variants on that where we get something like these ratcheting knives, like a Ukapi, the actual South African made in South Africa Ukapi. And then when it locks the spring on the back or the back spring or whatever you want to call this, locks well this little piece of the blade locks into a notch over there can you see that and then it keeps it secure so you have to lift this thing to ratchet it closed again okay so pretty much a variant on a lockback slip joint but this one has got the extra lock over there then we get things like the triad lock the triad lock is pretty much a lock back with a backstop yeah backstop backstop anyway um stop pin that's what i was looking for stop pin so it's got the whole back lock thing with the stop pin locking the blade please remember all of these knives the lock keeps it from going that way the stop pin keeps it from going that way. If one of these do not work, the blade will go up and down. Okay, so you need that way and that way to keep the blade solid this way and that way. Okay, so there we go with our triad lock. And this is most likely the strongest lock you can find on a knife. This is the cold steel range boss. There's lots of, uh, well, cold steel. They have the, what do you call it? Well, they're the only guys that make triad locks. Okay, so triad lock is pretty much a back lock with a stop pin. Then let's get into something more common. We get our liner locks, which means we have scales and the liner that pops over this side. It's on well, it's got tension on it, so it pops that way. Then it holds the blade in place this way. Still, if you cannot see a back um, a stop pin, it means it's got an internal stop pin. This is the Platypus by Pestec. And it is a liner lock. Liner locks are great, and most knives are liner locks. What makes liner locks cool is that you can have the same looking scales on both sides. Then we get things like this, the little Pilar, um, CRKT and most likely the coolest CRKT ever made, apart from maybe the Pilar 3, but yeah, this one was the first. So, little Pilar and this is a frame lock. Frame lock means the one side pops in. Um, this, if I can remember correctly, was first or not invent, well invented, this was the Chris Reeves knives integral frame lock I think they called the thing anyway so a frame lock which is pretty much just part of the frame popping in now why people don't always use this is because lots of frame lock knives have one colored scale or one type of scale on this side and then something else which is most likely steel or titanium or something on this side also it doesn't always look the same and you cannot put the same graphics on both sides but it's a stronger lock than a liner lock because look at the thick piece of metal we have here that's supporting the blade instead of the thinner piece over here. Not that I am saying that you cannot get a stronger liner lock. Um, I did not take out any ZTs or anything like that, but you do actually get liner locks with thick, thick liners over here um, that flips in that will lock your blade again same thing a stop pin will stop the blade do you look at that little fat stop pin over there can you see that okay so we have the stop pin over there stopping the blade from going that way and the frame lock stopping it from going that way which makes these very strong okay then we are looking at access style locks. Of course, when we talk about the access style lock, first and foremost, we are talking bench mates, which means this thing has got Omega Springs, which is a thin little piece of springy wire over here and over here. And if you pull this back, the blade falls free. And when you open it, I don't know if you can see that, 
then the blade after what's this thing called the axis lock yeah this is an axis lock it rolls along uh, 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 behind the blade until it gets to its little groove book and then it pops forward keeping it in place very strong locks very nice locks okay only thing i must say is i've never had a bench made break on me but i had ganzos which actually have thicker omega springs that's what you call the springs inside and one of my um, Ganzos, the Omega Spring broke. And now the thing doesn't work anymore. And it's not worth ordering new springs for a Ganzo. Okay. Um, so I will most likely use it for spare parts when a Benchmade breaks. Okay. So there we have Omega Springs. But then we get varieties on this. There's a lot of places because the patent on this... Um, laps so now we can get Gerbers and Ganzos and all manner of knives with these type of access style locks and I love that so yay access style locks then we get something like this the SOG which is pretty much the same thing they just have a different deployment method wonderful wonderful knife and I must say your fingers are not in the path of the blade you don't have to fidget with things over here or Oh, I forgot about the crag and the whatever you call that lock over here, which is uh, now I cannot remember the name of that lock. CRJB, um, they have this lock here at the back that you pull down, but it's pretty much exactly the same thing. Okay, next time I will remember to take that one out also, but I'm not going to stop this video to walk all the way to the cupboard to get it. Access style locks, wonderful, love them, some of my favorites, especially the deployment and ease of deployment because you can swing them open and closed whatever then we get weird hybrids like this thing the ranch ranch boss sorry not range boss ranch boss by cold steel this one is wonderful because it's a hybrid we have a liner lock over here but we also have a back spring at the back which means it makes it doubly secure. You have to push the line right away and then fight the tension of the back spring. And it might sound weird, but I love this knife. This thing is fantastic. If you want a hard working, all around awesome knife, this thing is great. Okay. There's no fidget factor in this little guy. Well, little, hardly a little guy with a four inch blade. Um, but there's no fidget factor over here, but this thing is fantastic. It makes me think of the old days. Okay, now let's get to my fave. Oh, wait, I missed one. Then, of course, we have the compression lock by Spyderco. Okay, the compression lock is pretty much exactly the same as a liner lock. Instead, this one is in front where the compression lock is a liner that's locking the blade in place at the back and then you press it to the side and then the blade will full closed okay they say this is stronger i don't know but i love the fact that you can do things like that with it and that your fingers are not actually in the path of the blade so compression lock then i love this little thing because it's got a button lock if you look over there when you can you see that when you press the button that fat part on the top of the screen for you um, goes away and then the blade can move past it okay and when you let it go it pops into place and it oh you cannot see anymore okay it pops into place and it lets go of the blade so you press it it goes away can you see that okay see ah, sorry you press it it goes away you leave it and it comes down okay so that's the way a button lock works now i love button locks unfortunately this is the only button lock knife i own so i need to buy more because like i said this is one of my favorites i have two favorites that i'm going to show you but i only own each of one of them so i need to get more Okay, so button lock, fantastic. I love the whole idea. I love the functionality of the stuff. 
Look at it. That's just fantastic. Okay, this is the Swag's Swayback button lock which is number two. And then my number one favorite, favorite knife lock of all times is this. This is a Spyderco Manix 2. Okay. It looks like your normal Axis style lock, but it's not. This thing, I'm going to lie to you. I know it works. That thing presses down. There's a spring on it. So it's not as, e well, it won't break as easily as a, no, you can't see in there. It won't break as easily as... Wait, maybe there. There you can see a bar with a spring around it. Okay. There. A bar with a spring around it. So you press it down and it lets go. Now, it's got something to do with ball bearings and little wizards living in here making the magic happen. I don't know. You'll have to ask somebody smarter to tell you how that works. And I've always been afraid to take this thing apart. But... I love this whole bearing lock or bearing lock or whatever they call it. And according to me, I don't know, I might be lying to you. This is one of the strongest locks, boring, maybe a triad lock. Okay, so this is a fantastic lock, fantastic knife. And the way it works, it's pure magic. Okay, that was my quick video for today. Um, next time when I see you, we'll talk about something else. Stay safe, happy, and have a good one. Goodbye.